one thing I have to do is I have to apologize to Phil Spencer and the Xbox team in general because I really felt I never disliked Phil Spencer. I always admired him and his accomplishments, but I felt that one of his Achilles heels was that he was weak. So I thought he was weak because I always wondered, like, why is not he making more exclusive deals aggressively? He's got all of this money. Sony has made it clear that they're going to they want to win. They want to win in the gaming industry. So why doesn't he I understand? I understood enough to know that even in some cases he might have had to do it at a loss. But I was just wondering why they weren't doing it. And I thought it was a failure on their part. Well, come to find out, unbeknownst to me, not only were they dealing with the exclusive deals that we knew Sony was 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 closing. There's also the fact that Sony was going around paying companies simply not to put their games on the Xbox, not an exclusive deal. Just don't put your game on the Xbox. And then on top of that, I imagine that Sony was also making threats with their, their market share, basically saying, hey, look, we're going to give you some money, but we really need you to do this. And if you don't do it, then you're not going to get the money and we're not going to let you put your game on the PlayStation. And for a lot of these companies, that's too much to bear because Sony has the number one market share among the consoles. And if you're creating a game, you cannot afford to be outside of that market share. So basically these companies in their defense, a lot of them probably felt like they had no choice. And one thing that came to light that I didn't really think about it, and it's really common sense. Sorry if the sound just messed up. I just put my hand over my mouth. But anyway, the way it was explained, the way Phil explained it was very clear. Because of Sony's market share, when we do an exclusive deal, we have to basically purchase that market share. If that makes us purchasing an exclusive deal much, much, much cheaper, you know, excuse me, I'm sorry, I said it wrong. It's much more expensive for them than it is for Sony to do an exclusive deal. And basically what they had to ask themselves is, is, hey, look, we have the money. We could spend it, but what are we gonna have when it's all said and done? What are we gonna have for our money? The fact that we were able to keep a game off of Sony and it probably was eventually gonna go to Sony anyway. So if we're gonna spend that kind of money, we need to own what we're paying for. We don't need to rent it. You know, it's like renting a car. You know, if you're gonna go out here and rent a car, and you're gonna spend just as much money renting that car as you would had you bought it, you may as well have purchased it. I can see that, I understand that now. In a couple of videos, I actually, you know, like I said, I've never insulted anybody with the company. I've never insulted Phil. I've never called for Phil to be fired. I just felt that was a weakness on his part. And I really just kind of wondered if he had what it took to, st to stand up to a businessman like Jim Ryan, who's obviously cutthroat. And come to find out, man, not only him, but a couple of other people, hopefully I don't slay this guy's name, Satya Nadala or something like that. But I'm sure you guys know who I'm talking about, even if I'm mispronouncing the name. But man, that dude's a hit man. <laughs> and come to find out, Phil is no weak guy. There's just a, a, a there's a method to the madness. There's a, there's, there's, there's a reason for everything he's doing, even if I and, and you and everybody else doesn't see it. And Matt Booty, Matt Booty is a ninja assassin. Keep the emails flowing, Matt. Keep the emails flowing.